All right, today we're going to talk about calculating conditional probability from a two-way table. What we have here is an example of information collected from a statistics class where we were talking about whether a person was a female or not and whether they preferred English or math. And so we had 19 students in the class and we have the totals filled in as well. There were 13 females in the class, six who were not, 11 preferred English and eight preferred math and both of those added up to 19. The first four probabilities that I've asked to calculate here are not conditional probabilities. They are in general. What is the probability of being a female in general? This is a marginal calculation. The probability of being a female is the probability of being a female in general. The probability of being a female is being female out of the entire class. That is going to be 13 out of the total of 19. Now you can divide that, you can turn it into a percent, I'm just going to write it as 13 19 Same sort of marginal probability when we're talking about the probability of not female, there are six that were not female out of 19 total. The probability of English, there are 11 people who preferred English total out of 19, and math, there were 8 out of 19. These were just in general out of the total population. I didn't give any conditions. I just said, what's this probability? But what if I was concerned about a particular group? What if I later wanted to calculate whether something was independent or not? A given probability can be written as the probability of A given B. Some people interpret that as an over, like it's a bar or a slash. That's actually not accurate it is representing the word given. Now we don't necessarily talk like that in the English language. We wouldn't necessarily say, what's the probability of math given female? You would say out of the females, what is the probability that they preferred math or something like that. So the wording is a little bit different, but they all mean the same thing. And using a formula, the way this is calculated is by finding the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. And what that's saying is find the probability that A and B occur together, they have to be both, over the probability of B. So if I'm trying to talk about this next problem where I'm saying the probability that a student prefers math given that they're not female, in statistical notation, that's the probability of math given not female. And if I was to try and use a formula for this, that would be to calculate the probability of preferring math and being not female and then dividing that by the calculated probability of being not female. Typically when you're doing math and not female, um, there's two of those people, two out of 19, and not female we've already calculated was six out of 19. So when you're stacking those two into a fraction, you have a complex fraction. But calculating the probability of a given in a two-way table is actually a little bit easier because you're talking about a particular group. If I'm saying, hey, we are talking about those that are not female, then I have that condition that I only care about those that are not female. And of those that are not female, how many of them prefer math? Well, there's two. So the probability of preferring math given you are not female is equal to 2 out of the 6 not females total. That simplifies to 1 third. Now again, I said that you could use a formula. The probability of being um, preferring math and not being female, we've already circled that. That's 2 out of 19 total divided by not females, which is 6 out of 19. And what winds up happening is you're using marginal calculations that are always out of the total. And so these 19s wind up canceling when you reduce. That's If you're using rules of fractions, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And so I have 2 over 6, which is 1 third. The formula does work when you're doing and you have to think about whether you need to multiply and that's that's a whole other situation of whether you're dealing with independent events or dependent events but from a two-way table 
all you have to do is focus on the condition that I'm given. What is, what is the group that I'm talking about? If I'm talking about the not females, well, there's six of those. How many of those prefer math? Let's, that, let's apply that same logic to answer the next question. What is the probability that a student is not female given that they prefer math? Well, that looks like it's the same question, but it's not. I have a different condition. I'm saying they have to prefer math first. So where are those that prefer math? They're in this column. These are the people who prefer math. And there are eight of them total. So of those eight, how many are not female? Still two, as before, but now I'm talking about two out of eight rather than two out of six. So this is the probability that I was talking about somebody who was not female, given that they prefer math. And that was two out of eight. So I encourage you when you're doing conditional probability in a two-way table to use what you're given that's going to wind up being your denominator, but that's, that's the group that you're focusing on. If I asked you to focus on females, then I would be dealing with this row right here. If I was dealing with not females, the next row. People who prefer English, and then people who prefer math. So there's four different subsets that I could create to find conditional probability. Hope that helps.